Hi everyone, my name is David and I make music on the internet, but there's some times where I make tutorials about the tools that I use to make music on the internet, and today is one of those days. Someone in the comments had asked if I could do a tutorial on how to use Retrolog 2, Cubase's built-in analog style synthesizer, and I said, yes I can, and guess what? Today is that day. Here we go. Okay, so we have uh, Retrolog open to its natural state, the init patch, which is, of course, a little bit harsh, so I'm gonna change that to a sine wave, uh, just to make it easier on us. And we'll start with, you know, if you wanna use Get Up and Running, you can just go to the presets, and let's say you want a bass, uh, Disco Groover. You know, if you wanted a lead, you could just search for a lead. Uh, we'll do viralism. Or a pad, there's also pads in here. S movement pad, chord fantasy. So, I mean, but everybody knows how to use uh, <laughs> presets. I think that y'all wanna get a little bit deeper, so that's what I'm gonna do today. So we'll start back with the init patch, which is just a saw wave, and we'll move it to sign, and we'll go through the parameters of uh, Retrolog so you can learn how to use it. Uh, the first, let's start with the voice parameters. Right now it's on polyphonic mode, which means that you can play chords. And uh, let's see here. You can switch the polyphony to whatever you want. And you can also choose monophonic mode. And let me show you what this retrigger does. Monophonic means you can just play one note at a time, so. You know, uh, here's what retrigger does. If I hold a low G and then hit a high G, it won't retrigger. If I turn the retrigger on, it will re-trigger. Now let's move on to glide. Glide is a classic sound. I'll turn up the time so you can hear what's going on. Now that's with fingering off. With fingering on, it's more legato, so it doesn't work, but if I hold this down, so that's what fingering does. Voice mode works in polyphony uh, it'll trigger the last voices. So if I play, let's turn off glide so no one gets confused. If I have polyphony set at two here, and I play a C chord, you'll notice that C goes away uh, because that's the last one I played. If I play G, E, the G goes away. Uh, and it's the same with first, low, and high, and then there's the trigger modes. There's normal, resume, and legato. So I hope that's uh, relatively clear. Moving on to the main section, we have octaves. We have key follow and random pitch. I think these are holdovers from the old analog synth days. These will get you into trouble. For instance, if I play Mary Had a Little Lamb. And then I activate the key follow. Check this out. And I think that there's uses for key follow, I assume. I just don't know what they are. I know that when I accidentally hit it, it takes me like half an hour to figure out what's going on with my synths because they sound wonky. Uh, and then there's random pitch. I think this is another holdover. Check this out. And there's pitch bend up and down. So if I set this to negative 12 and this to positive 12, it'll be a full octave. There's tunes, so you can set it to 432 if you want to get uh, to the vibe of the universe, you know? Like, uh, here's A4. Ooh, man, I felt that vibrating in my soul. That's that's a real thing that exists. Just kidding, no, it doesn't. I would suggest you leave it at 440 or else your other instruments might be out of tune. And then there's your main volume. Uh, so let's move on to the oscillator phase. You have four types of waves. You have a sine wave. Let's go up a little bit more in polyphony. Oh, random pitch is still on. See, I told you it gets wonky if you leave it on. There we go. Uh, so you have a sine wave, a triangle wave, 
a saw wave and a square wave. And according to the manual, 50% on the square wave is a perfect square. And anything else is a rectangle. And a pro tip is if you hold shift, you get these dials that don't have text input, it'll go slower. So you can dial in exactly what you want. And if you hold alt, it becomes a fader, which is easier for some people to use as well. So that's a good one to keep in mind. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have the octaves, which is pretty self-explanatory, just like in the main section. And we have coarse tuning, so we can tune it up or down semitone. So if this is seven, that would be a perfect fifth of one that's normal. And then if this was four, it would be a major triad. One, two, three, four. So, booyah. And uh, let's see what else we got. There's fine tuning. And that covers all the knobs. If you hit control and click, it'll go back to zero. Uh, boom. So let's look at the types that we have. We have a single, that's just a single sine wave making noise. We have a synced, which is a master slave, and that is determined the pitch of the, uh, the slave wave, yes, is the shape. So there's just pure sign. And then there's a cross wave, which is uh, the audio rate determines the shape. There's XOR, I don't really know what's going on. I think it's two square waves modulated by something else. And there's multi, and multi is very interesting. Uh, you can do number of voices, but let's say you do 3.5. That's actually four oscillators. Uh, three at full volume, one at half volume. And if you detune it, you have a detuning. Let's say we choose five as detuning. That is plus five, minus five, plus 10, minus 10. That's how they handle it. And you can hear what that sounds like here. Very nice ethereal type of sound. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's also free phase, random phase and fixed phase. You can dial in whatever you want the phase to be. You can have the phase be random or have it always start at the same place. And that's about it. So those are the oscillators. Then we'll move on to the sub, because all three oscillators are the same. The sub will be one octave lower than whatever you have set here. So there's a triangle wave, a saw wave, and a square wave. But let's say you set this oscillator to negative 16. That's the same as the sub. And if you set this to negative 32, that'll actually be lower than the sub because it is one, the sub is one octave lower than what you have in the main. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, another source of noise generation is the actual noise tab. There's white noise, there's pink noise, there's white bandpass filter, and there's pink bandpass filter. And then the only other source of noise I would say is the ring modulator. So this is modulating oscillators one and two. So if we turn those on, but we turn the volume all the way down, we'll get the ring modulation between those two. So that's what the ring modulator sounds like with those particular oscillators. And that brings me into mixing the oscillator mix. You can have as much or as little signal from each oscillator as you want. Or you can turn the oscillators off. And the only other way to get sound is to route audio, audio into it. And you do that by activating the side chain and then any audio signal you have, let me just put this to stereo out. This is what I'm working with, with this audio signal. Audio, audio, audio. Oops. Let me just. All right. Audio, audio, audio. Audio, audio, audio. Let's say I want to route that into Retrolog. I just, instead of routing it to stereo out, I could route it, or I could do it as a send as well. But I do uh, route it directly, I'll just directly route it into Retrolog. And then this becomes the source. This has to be playing. This has to be selected. Audio, audio, audio. Audio, audio, audio. Audio, audio, audio. Audio, audio, I'll turn audio. it down because it's about to get loud. Then you audio, could audio, audio. use the filters. Audio, audio, audio. Audio, audio, the envelope audio. resonance. Audio, audio, audio. 
So you can use it to uh, screw with an audio signal. Uh, that's a new feature in Cubase 9. If you have Cubase 8.5 or below, you do not get this feature. Too bad, so sad, I'm sorry. So let's move on. We have the oscillator mix. We can put audio through it, but I'll just kill the side chain because that's, you're not gonna be using this for that, really. I mean, they're, they were pooping their pants like it was the greatest thing in the world. I mean, how often will you use that? Who knows? But so we're gonna go back to our sign cool and show you all that these filters there's a buttload of filters everything you could possibly want low passes high passes band passes band reject filters and all passes so i mean you'll just have to screw around with these to see what they do And then you have several types of distortion tube, uh, clip, which is transistor, bit reduction, which is the most dramatic, perhaps. Rate and rate KF. The rate KF is interesting to note because it follows the pitch of your key. And I gotta turn key follow off. Key follow is another one of those ones that gets your pitch is all wonky. Pretty cool, huh? So uh, then you have an ADSR uh, of the filter. But then we'll move over to the amplifier section and you have an ADSR of the amplifier. I don't know, if you don't know what ADSR is, it's beyond the purview of this video, but look it up, it's important. <laughs> Trust me. But here is a very key thing to keep in mind. If you take away one thing from this, take away this from the tutorial. The velocity, and let me just... Uh, will always be at 100 if this is at 0%. So it doesn't matter how softly I hit this stuff, it'll always be at 100% unless I turn the velocity to 100% and then I get the full range of So if you take away one thing, that's counterintuitive and you might be wondering, why am I not getting any velocity change in Retrolog? It's because this velocity on your amp needs to be at 100% to get the full range of the velocity spectrum. Weird, I know, but that's just how it works. Finally, uh, or not quite finally, let's look at the modulator section. There are four LFOs. These are monophonic LFOs, one and two. Three and four are polyphonic LFOs. And then you get an additional filter, which is good for modulation. And you do modulation in the modulation matrix. So with LFO one as a saw wave or crazy wave or whatever we want, we can uh, use LFO as the modulator for Let's do something wild, coarse pitch. And you do that with whatever you want, the amplifier uh, with cutoff. And so modulation is basically just one parameter causing modulations to a different parameter. And with the modulation matrix, you can do it uh, 16 times because you have four uh, tabs with four slots each. So you can do as much modulation as you could possibly dream of and get some crazy otherworldly sounds. And with that, we've covered the synth section of Retrolog, which is the main section, but we'll move on. We also have a step sequencer in here, fully functional. So it may be on key, which might confuse you. But if you do it on pitch, you know you can activate this stuff. Turn stuff off, have this be, you know, negative five, this could be positive four. And if you don't want to do this stuff yourself, and this is vo velocity here, you can just add in phrases from the phrase libraries here. Mm -hmm. 
and you have performance controls right here and you can uh, automate those as well. So there's a fully functional step sequencer in Retrolog. And finally, we have the effects tab. The effects tab is what you might expect. There's a resonator, an EQ, a phaser, mod effects, and mod you get to here on the phaser tab, uh, delay and reverb. And those function as you may expect. And you'll just have to play around with those. I mean, they uh, tie back into the synthesizer controls. And that's my quick rundown of Retrolog 2, the deep dive, but also a quick rundown. It's a little bit of both. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe because I'm this channel, I'm trying to make music. And when I learn stuff, I'm trying to share it with you all so that I can get the technology out of the way and you guys can focus on making music. So feel free to leave a thumbs up. And if you have a suggestion for a future video, let me know because together we'll figure this stuff out. Bye.